Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair bring you Our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden. It's time once again for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks under the direction of Al Lewis. Well, Madison High School, where Our Miss Brooks teaches English, is in the midst of its annual toy drive for underprivileged children. Supervising the neighborhood volunteer workers is Miss Brooks' landlady, Margaret Davis, who discussed her chore over breakfast last Friday morning. It looks like we're going to make our motto come true, Connie. A toy for every boy and girl. Everyone's cooperating wonderfully. Oh, I'm glad to hear that, Mrs. Davis. You and the rest of the community toy committee are certainly going to make a lot of kids happy this Christmas. If I've said it once, I've said it a hundred times. Christmas is for the children. You've said it five hundred times, but it's a nice sentiment. (laughs) The contributions have been coming in steadily. Yesterday, the rat family down the street, you know, the real wealthy people, Uh they donated four hop-along cowboy outfits that were in excellent condition. That's quite a haul, isn't it? Yes, but it puzzles me. They only have one little boy. Oh, don't let that puzzle you. Maybe they have four television sets. (laughs) Oh, that's Walter Denton. He's driving me to school. I'll get it. Be right there, Walter. Good morning, Walter. And how is every little thing? I don't mean to be rude, but there's no time for the amenities. (laughs) Miss Brooks... Have you seen the morning paper? Not yet. Well, I got it right here. Look, there's a picture of Stretch Snodgrass on the front page. Stretch Snodgrass? How did he make the front page? Did he run the wrong way again in the football game? (laughs) Oh, no, this has nothing to do with his career as an athlete. The article says that he found a genuine Indian tomahawk, and the State Historical Society gave him $300 for it. Three hundred dollars? It isn't the amount of money involved that's important. It's the fact that Stretch's discovery is the first clue to the whereabouts of Chief Thunderbird's Arapaho War Scouts. I didn't even know they were missing. (laughs) Well, they disappeared hundreds of years ago, Miss Brooks. And there's every reason to believe that their burial ground is somewhere in this area. Look, Walter, isn't this an awful lot of fuss to be kicking up over the discovery of one little Indian relic? You don't understand, Miss Brooks. These Arapahoes wore silver and gold amulets and long capes made of peacock feathers. And they were fierce warriors, too. What did they do, tickle each other to death? (laughs) (laughs) They made weapons of solid gold. The point is, whenever and wherever they were buried, they had all their possessions buried with them. Now, would you like to hear some more details? Not right now, little beaver. The white squaw got a go little red teepee Make heap big know-how for heap little know-nothings I can't say that I'm completely enraptured by your Indian dialect, Miss Brooks Don't be so critical, I never took a lesson to pick up Harriet Conklin, Miss Brooks. It'll only take a minute. Well, that's funny. I don't see Harriet on the porch. Oh, but there's Mr. Conklin in the vacant lot next to his house. I wonder what our beloved principal's doing out there. Now, come on, Miss Brooks. Let's see what old Marblehead is... <laughs> what Mr. Conklin's up to. All right, Walter. After riding with you, it's always nice to touch land again. Now, <laughs> now, uh, let me see. 20 feet north, 40 feet east. Or was it 90 feet east? No, 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 it was 40 feet well, What are you doing, Mr. Conklin? You're measuring the lot? I had the measurements paced off exactly until I was interrupted. Oh, we didn't mean to intrude, Mr. Conklin. Uh, you never do. <laughs> <laughs> it so happens I've been pacing off these points to see if the information on my deed of purchase is accurate. I bought this lot quite some years ago. Yeah, I know. This is the one your wife always refers to as Conklin's folly, isn't it? <laughs> Walter, that's not polite Uh, Don't chide him, Miss Brooks He may be right Although I've always considered The original Conklin's folly To be my daughter Harriet's idiot boyfriend (laughs) Be that as it may I've never had what I consider A fair offer on this property Or I would have sold it long ago Do you have a prospect now, Mr. Conklin? 
Your interest in my personal affairs touches me deeply, Miss Brooks. <laughs> Common courtesy, however, demands that I answer you. Yes, I have at last found a sucker. I, I have found a gentleman <laughs> who is willing to meet my terms. I am parting with this piece of real estate today for $2,000. $2,000? Gosh, I wouldn't give 2,000 cents for this junior jungle. <laughs> you certainly have a sound head on your shoulders, Denton. And if you want it to remain there, I suggest you keep your quivering nostrils out of my affairs. <laughs> now, kindly take off. Contact. <laughs> Daddy. Hello, Miss Brooks. Hi, Walter, dear. Just call me Conklin's Folly. <laughs> what do you want, Harriet? It's time for you to go to school, Daddy. Oh, thank you, child. I'll get the car. You're driving with me today. But, Daddy, Walter came all the way over I to... said you are driving with me. Now go get your things on the double, girl. <laughs> aye, aye, sir. See you at school, folks. And make sure you get there on time for a change, both of you. Nothing like selling a lot to perk up a fellow's spirits. <laughs> oh, well, maybe the new owner will clear some of the trash off this property. Come on, let's get back to the car, Walter. Okay. Watch your step, Miss Brooks. Now, he tells me. What happened? I either stepped on a stick or broke my leg. <laughs> I'm happy to report it's a stick. <laughs> and a nice round one at that. This would make a good blackboard pointer. Think I'll take it along. Okay, but hurry, Miss Brooks. We don't want to be late. You saw how irritable Mr. Conklin was. Oh, that's all on the surface, Walter. Behind that granite countenance, Mr. Conklin is pure concrete. <laughs> well, I think I'll get a drink of nice cold water before class starts, Miss Brooks. You want one? Cold water at this hour of the morning? That's the worst thing you can possibly do to your system, Walter. It never hurts Mr. Boynton any. He stops at the fountain every morning before class. My throat's pretty dry at that. <laughs> I'd better stop for a nice, cool drink. Yeah, yeah I'll hold it for you. <laughs> Thanks, Walter. Yeah, now one for me. <laughs> I think I'll have one for the road. Well, good morning, Miss Brooks. Oh, Mr. Boynton. What are you doing at the fountain? Oh, I, I make it a practice to drink a quart of water before lunch every day. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll lean over and get my quota for the morning. Ouch! What happened, Mr. Boynton? Would you mind putting the end of that pointed stick on the floor? <laughs> I just picked this stick up in Mr. Conklin's vacant lot and forgot I even had it in my hand. Oh, say, let's see that a moment. Well, this is an arrow, Miss Brooks. An arrow? Yes. You see these tufts of feathers down at this end? Uh -huh. And the peculiar shape of the tip? Oh, it is an arrow, isn't it? An arrow? Mr. Boynton, did you read that story about Stretch Snodgrass in the morning paper? Well, yes, I did. He received $300 for discovering an old Indian tomahawk. Exactly. And if that was worth $300, can you imagine what the lucky person will get who finds the Arapaho Indian burial ground? Miss Brooks, where did you say you found this arrow? On Mr. Conklin's vacant lot while I was... Oh, my goodness. You don't suppose that... Oh, these kind of things just don't happen to me. Uh, I've made a lifelong study of Indian law, Miss Brooks, and from all appearances, I'd, I'd be inclined to say that in this arrow, you've made a most exciting and lucrative discovery. You mean I'm really in the wampum? <laughs> you think I've stumbled upon the real burial ground? Oh, it's entirely possible, Miss Brooks. Well, thank you, and good morning, Chief Cochise. <laughs> Brush your teeth with Colgate, Colgate Dental Cream, it cleans your breath. What a toothpaste. What a cleans your teeth. Colgate toothpaste. Cleans your breath. What a toothpaste. What a cleans your teeth. Colgate Dental Cream cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. And the Colgate way stops tooth decay best. More than two years' research showed the Colgate way of brushing teeth right after eating helps stop more decay for more people than ever before reported in dentifrice history. Yes, the Colgate way stopped tooth decay best, better than any other home method of oral hygiene. No other dentifrice, ammoniated or not, 
has proof of such results. And you should know that Colgate's, while not mentioned by name, was the one and only toothpaste used in the research on tooth decay recently reported in Reader's Digest. So always follow the Colgate way to clean your breath while you clean your teeth. And stop tooth decay best. Brush your teeth with Colgate. Colgate Dental Cream. It cleans your breath. What a toothpaste. What a cleans your teeth. And the Colgate way stops tooth decay best. <laughs> Well, because of an arrow she picked up on Mr. Conklin's lot, our Miss Brooks thinks she may have discovered the Arapaho burial ground. At lunch period, she hastened to the school library to verify her findings. But before we join her there, let's look in on a corridor in another part of Madison High. Oh, Harriet, just a minute, dear. Oh, hello, Mrs. Davis. Which classroom has been designated for the toy committee to work in? Oh, the old shop class in the East Wing. Oh, thank you, dear. Oh, by the way, weren't you supposed to collect some toys from your neighbors last week? I did, Mrs. Davis, but they were in pretty bad shape. All I could get was a doll with her head torn completely off, a rusty cap pistol, and an old warp bow and arrow set. That's a shame. What did you do with them, Harriet? Well, they seem so completely beyond salvage that I just buried them in the vacant lot next to our house. <laughs> Let's see. Legend, lore. Here it is. Indian lore. Hiya, Miss Brooks. Oh! Oh, sorry, folks. Walter, you startled me. Oh, I didn't mean to. Gosh, I've been in all kinds of trouble here today. Miss Richardson kicked me out of this reading room twice already. Why? Just for talking in my normal voice. <laughs> Walter's just careless, folks. It won't happen again. Shh. People are trying to read, Miss Brooks What are you carrying that stick around for? This stick happens to be an arrow, Walter What I'm trying to do now is to check and see if it's an Arapaho arrow You mean this is what you found on Mr. Conklin's lot this morning? That's right Now let's look in this book and try to find the identifying marks You mean the burial ground may be situated right next door to our beloved principal? <laughs> Sorry let me help you, Miss Brooks. Um, uh, uh, tribes. Um, Algonquins, Apache, Arapaho. Now, listen to this. The Arapahoes were renowned for their excellent beadwork and luxurious tribal costumes, and their witch doctors were among the first to initiate the use of signal fires for communication. Naturally, more Arapaho witch doctors use smoke signals than any other known brand. <laughs> What does it say about the arrows? Well, let's see. Oh, here it is. Uh, the Arapaho arrows are distinguished from those of other tribes by a small tuft of brown feathers attached to one end of the shaft. Uh, what color are your feathers, Miss Brooks? <laughs> My feathers are brown. <laughs> and look, so are the ones on this arrow. We've done it! Miss Brooks, we found the Indian burial ground. We found it? I don't recall taking out any partnership papers. We'll use my car, and I'll furnish the shovels, and we'll get right out to Mr. Conklin's the minute school's over. Well, you were the first to call my attention to the story about Stretch, but let's keep this thing quiet, whatever we do. Oh, there you are, Miss Brooks. Shh! <laughs> Excuse me. I'm sorry I kept you waiting for lunch, Mr. Boynton, but I just had to substantiate the evidence. Look, the feathers on this arrow coincide exactly with the ones in this book. You mean it's an Arapaho arrow? Definitely. Eureka, we've found the Indian burial ground. I haven't heard so much weaving since I flunked domestic science. <laughs> I'm growing into quite a little corporation. What's the difference, Miss Brooks? If it's really authentic, there'll be plenty of reward for all of us. What would you say the burial ground is worth, Walter? Well, my guess would be in the neighborhood of $10,000, at least. $10,000? $10,000? 
careful with those shovels, Walter. We don't want the whole world to know we're digging for buried treasure. Okay, Miss Brooks, I'll watch it. Just where did you find that arrow this morning, Miss Brooks? I'm not positive, Mr. Boynton, but I think it was right around here someplace. Yes, this looks like the spot. We've only got two shovels. Oh, that's all right. We can relieve each other when somebody gets tired. Now, let's start digging. Boy, that ground looks pretty hard. Oh, it sure is. <laughs> May I make a suggestion, Walter? What is it, Miss Brooks? Take my shovel and dig for a while, and I'll grunt. <laughs> Say, I've hit something. Help me lift this brass object, will you, Walter? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Say, this is a genuine relic. Well, it does look like some sort of a warrior's breastplate. Oh, and it's definitely Indian. It says so right on the metal. Look, Miss Brooks. That is the front part of a motorcycle. <laughs> Amazing, isn't it? And they called them a primitive race. But they couldn't possibly have built a... Oh, you're joshing. He's just a little josh. Keep digging. Yeah, I'm going to start another hole. Here. Yeah, I'll start digging a few feet away. All right, and I'll give you some moral support by reciting a bit of appropriate poetry. <clears throat> On the lot of Mr. Conklin stood two braves with valiant faces, searching for some buried treasure, loot to make life smooth and pleasant, spurred on by a lovely creature who stood by without a shovel. Stood she there, a tired teacher, hoping soon to walk out loaded. <laughs> Lovely home you have here, Mr. Conklin. Oh, thank you, Mr. Howard. Now, about my lovely lot. I have the papers all ready for you. I see. You know, of course, that I'm going to build a home on that lot. As far as I'm concerned, you can... Oh, it's... A... <laughs> it's a splendid lot to build on. It's nice to know one's neighbors in advance, I always say. Oh, I quite agree. And if I may say so, you couldn't ask for finer neighbors. We Conklins are... Friendly folk, Mr. Howard. Well, I'm sure that you are, but if we're going to be living next door to one another, how about shedding the formality? Just call me Mike. Very well. Here are the papers, Mike. <laughs> and uh, what do folks call you? Osgood. Osgood? <laughs> Now, what's your real name? <laughs> My real name is Osgood. Now, let's get on with the signing. Uh, just a minute. I'd like to take another look at the property, if you don't mind. Uh, another look? I'm sure it hasn't sunk into the sea, Mr. Howard. But if you want another look, there's no reason why you shouldn't have it. Come with me. Mm -hmm. Of course, a lot doesn't look like very much before it's all been... Holy cow! What's going on out here? What are all those mounds of earth? And those, those holes. You must have gophers, Osgood. <laughs> Look, there's something moving in that hole. Great Scott, it's a gopher with a shovel. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Conklin. Miss Brooks, what are you doing here? How's Mrs. Conklin? <laughs> She's fine. Now answer my question. What are you doing on my lot? Well, sir, we just thought we'd work up an appetite. We? Hi, Mr. Conklin. <laughs> then what are you doing in that hole? Digging. Digging for what? How's Mrs. Conklin? <laughs> I don't understand this, Mr. Conklin. You... I'll get to the bottom of it right now. Who's in this hole over here? Oops! Ah! <laughs> Mr. Conklin. I didn't drop in for tea, Boynton. <laughs> now help me out of this confounded hole. Oh, yes, sir. Just hang on to my arm here. Oh. There we are. 
Now, just what is this digging all about? Have they reactivated the WPA? <laughs> no, no, sir. We were just sort of cleaning up the lot for you. <laughs> well, they don't seem to have done any damage, Osgood. I'll sign the papers and we'll conclude our deal. Uh, very well. I'll put my signature down first. And oh, then you stop! Can... Don't sign those papers. Whatever happened to Pearl White? <laughs> Mr. Boynton's right, Mr. Conklin. You shouldn't sign those papers. And why shouldn't I sign them, Miss Self-Appointed Business Manager? If you'll just step over here alone, Mr. Conklin, I'd like to tell you something privately. Oh, excuse me, Mike. I'm just for a moment. Make it snappy, Osgood. <laughs> now, what's this all about, Miss Brooke? Well, I demand... What? <laughs> that sounds like a lot of hogwash to me. <laughs> What in heaven's name is an Arapaho? <laughs> well, yes, but after all, I get ten thousand dollars. <laughs> Mr. Boynton, you tell him. Yes, yes. What's this fantastic story about Indians, Boynton? Well, sir. <laughs> they did, eh? Yes, sir. And not only that, but <laughs> she did, eh? Well, what do you know about that? Excuse me a moment. Uh, Mr. Howard, the deal is off. But Osgood... Don't Osgood me. I've changed my mind about selling this property. Now, look here, old man. I I've got to have a place to build. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll give you 3000 for the lot. Not a chance. Four. 4000 in cash. In cash? Don't forget, Mr. Conklin. <laughs> yes, yes. <clears throat> I'm sorry, Howard. <laughs> This lot is not for sale. But you already agree. You, sir, are trespassing. <laughs> now kindly leave the premises at once. Well, all right, Conklin, I'll go. But if this is the way you do business, I pity the people who work for you at Madison High. Here, here. <laughs> Now, if one of you will hand me a shovel, I'd like to inaugurate this most auspicious moment in Indian history by personally exploring this hallowed ground. Oh, here you are, sir. Uh, Take my shovel. I haven't been very fortunate in my findings so far. None of us have, but now that you're our partner, Mr. Conklin... Yeah. Partner? I don't recall any of you chipping in to buy this lot. But we made the discovery, and I stopped you from selling it to Mr. Howard. Uh, for your efforts, you shall receive 10% of the gravy. A profit. <laughs> Just 10%? To divide amongst you. Now stand back. I'm going to start digging. Look, you found something already. Oh, pick it up, please, Miss Brooks. It looks like a little doll's head. Doll's head, indeed. Miss Brooks, you happen to be holding a genuine Arapaho shrunken head. <laughs> Look here, Mr. Conklin, where you rested your shovel. It's a rusty old gun. Oh, give it here. Well, this is a find. It's an old western six-shooter. I can just picture the scene. A courageous cowboy goes down fighting the Indians with this in his hand. No wonder the Indians gave him his lumps. This six-shooter is loaded with caps. <laughs> caps? <laughs> Miss Brooks, I don't want to seem unduly suspicious, but there's something very strange going on here. If I thought for one moment that you were mistaken oh, about wait, these... Mr. Conklin, here's something that should convince you. Look at this Indian hunting bow. Oh, let me see that. Yes, it looks authentic enough. It even has the ancient tribal markings on the side here. Let's see if I can read this Indian scribbling. Geronimo hunting bow. Made in... Made in... Japan! <laughs> That's ridiculous. How could the Indians have gotten over to Japan? <laughs> in those days. <laughs> Miss Brooks, a terrible thought has just crept into my consciousness. You have prevented me from accepting an offer of $4,000 for this lot because of the wild imaginings of your fevered mind. But, Mr. Conklin... These so-called treasures of yours look like nothing but children's toys to me. But, Mr. Conklin, be sensible. Who'd bury toys in the vacant lot? Hello, Miss Brooks. Hi, Daddy. Hello, Harriet. What's everybody doing out here? Why, you've dug up the toys I buried yesterday. So they are toys. Toys? Toys? Four thousand dollars. Well, 
will, Miss Brooks. On the lot of Mr. Conklin stood a woman, proud, undaunted, facing westward, facing sunward, facing years of unemployment. <laughs> Eve Arden returns in just a moment, but first... Dream girl, dream girl, Beautiful luster cream girl. Tonight? Yes, tonight. Show him how much lovelier your hair can look after a luster cream shampoo. Luster cream, world's finest shampoo. No other shampoo in the world gives you K. Dumit's magic blend of secret ingredients plus gentle lanolin. Better than a soap, better than a liquid. Luster cream is a dainty cream shampoo. Leaves hair three ways lovelier. Fragrantly clean, free of loose dandruff. Glistening with sheen, soft, manageable. Even in hardest water, luster cream lathers instantly. No special rinse needed after a luster cream shampoo. So gentle, luster cream is wonderful even for children's hair. Tonight? Yes, tonight, try luster cream shampoo. Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. You owe your crowning glory to... A luster cream shampoo. And now, with a special presentation for Miss Eve Arden, here is the Executive Secretary of the Southern Section, California Teachers Association, Dr. Lionel De Silva. In recognition of meritorious service to public education and thereby to American youth and the teaching profession, the California Teachers Association Southern Section presents this certificate of recognition to Miss Eve Arden as Hollywood Chairman of the Radio Industry for its participation in American Education Week. Thank you, Dr. De Silva. I guess the best way I can live up to this flattering certificate is by reminding all our listeners that American Education Week starts today. During this coming week, we are all invited to visit the schools and become better acquainted with the teachers so that we can understand the vital role that public education plays in our democracy. Remember, the public school teacher plays an important role in your child's future. He not only guides the child in growth toward maturity, but prepares him to be socially and economically competent in the school, home, and the community, and to be a responsible member of society. Thank you. <laughs> This is Burn Smith reminding you to tune in next week to another Our Miss Brooks show brought to you by Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair and Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, written by Al Lewis, with the music of Wilbur Hatch. Mr. Boynton is played by Jeff Chandler, Mr. Conklin by Gail Gordon. Others in tonight's cast were Jane Morgan, Dick Crenna, Gloria McMillan, and Jim Backus. <laughs> You want a beauty soap for a beauty bath. And your bath becomes a beauty bath when you change to proper cleansing with palm olive soap. For bathing with this beauty soap brings you the full beautifying effects of palm olive's mild and gentle lather, proved by doctors to bring most women lovelier complexions in just 14 days. Bath size palm olive is designed to give you everything you need for all over beauty care. Fragrance for daintiness, mildness for loveliness, purity for gentleness, Big bath size for thriftiness. So get big bath size palm olive. So mild, so pure, so right for all of you. If you like mysteries that are as full of chuckles as chills, be sure to hear Mr. and Mrs. North every Tuesday over the same network. Don't miss the exciting and laughable adventures of these amateur detectives. Hear Mr. and Mrs. North every Tuesday night. And be with us again next week at the same time for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. Bob Lamont speaking. Stay tuned now for Jack Benny. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.